It's all go, really, isn't it? We're heading to an election next year. I think it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, and probably more so because it would appear to me and many other commentators that uh, a long-time player in our political um, galaxy is back in the game, that being New Zealand First and Winston Peters. Whilst the party had been under something of a cloud for the last wee while, as a serious fraud office case was brought in court in Auckland, a case which was ultimately unsuccessful and saw two men or two defendants who have permanent name suppression acquitted and apparently exonerated uh, for uh, inconsistencies what the Crown alleged um, in failure were crimes in gathering money intended for New Zealand First and putting it instead into bank accounts controlled by the New Zealand First Foundation. The leader of New Zealand First, Winston Peters, was not cited in that case. He was not part of that case. Um, though, of course, the finances of the party, it all swelled around them. But with the case over, with permanent name suppression, it would seem to many commentators that New Zealand First can get back to business in a political environment where it has some prospect of returning to Parliament um, through gathering 5% of the vote uh, under MMP. And the man who, <laughs> despite many predictions of his political demise, <laughs> is likely to be there next year is the Right Honourable Winston Raymond Peters, who joins us now. Uh, Winston, good to see you. We should tell people last time we had a chat was at the... Uh, Island All Black rugby match in in, in Wellington. Um, good to see it you was, again. It was a bit dismal, but I, I think I might have said to you then that this case is coming up for finality. Yeah, and that we were very confident of winning. Um, that was a very long introduction, Sean. Yeah, yeah, it was. Real, however, here's the reality: this was always political dirt from the word go. Yeah. Here comes it's April two thousand and twenty. The SFO announces, unlike any other case. We're investigating New Zealand first, and we'll have the investigations completed before the election. When have you ever heard an investigative body making a, uh, a description of their timetable like that? And we said it was a um, bunch of uh, a tissue of lies and a political stunt. And at the end of the day, we paid a massive cost for it. But as I said to you then, and I'm saying to you now, we were always confident we were going to knock these guys out of court. Do you believe yeah. that case cost you? Five percent, and therefore representation in the current parliament. If we go back to two thousand and twenty in April, before that announcement, we were doing not too bad at all. I mean, uh, we never polled so well until the election day itself because of the nature of our support. But when that sort of thing happens, then you're being defamed. There is a smear that's out there deliberately, and that's the consequence. Okay, um, despite. The acquittal, despite the case failing at every turn, it would seem, there was evidence uh, presented in open open court, Mr Peters, that did suggest that when one gives money to New Zealand First, you'd want to be checking it's actually going to the party because que clearly donations, which people believed were going to the party, were in fact going to another entity. Look, I know exactly the circumstance. Here's the amazing thing, though. You remember all the attacks being made by journalists and former colleagues of yours on a guy called Winston Peters. In fact, Morning Report on Radio New Zealand has not even had the decency to say that we won, even to today, having won 25 different attacks on us leading up to the 2020 election. But here's the point. I know it very well. It's like having two forms being given to people. This one goes this place, this one goes that place. That's what was given to these donors. Now, when people leave, and none, not one paid any money at any event we're at, they paid it later. And when they leave, they're not, they, weren't con they seem to be, they weren't concerned which form they filled out. Now, that's n not a matter of a wrong description, but I know about the form because I wrote the form myself. There were the two forms. But, were there two forms? Yeah, there are two forms. If you want to donate to the New Zealand First Foundation, go there. If you want to vote for, uh, uh, donate to New Zealand First, be there. Here are the electoral laws of this country. Above a certain amount, it must be disclosed. Below that, it does not. Okay. Almost and you both, do you write the forms for the foundation and for the party? 
No, I didn't write the forms for the foundation. I'm oh. sorry. The, the forms for the foundation were, were not in the way you say it. We uh, were seeing people and they want to know what the law is and what can you do. And we'd say, well, if you want to donate to this, here's that form. And we're giving you a second form and you want to donate for this. We'd make the explanation. We'd explain to them very, very clearly. And that's the point. That and makes, the that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense, uh, Mr. Peters. But that's, so, why all, that's, why all, that's why all those businessmen appeared at the court when they were investigating, saying, look, I didn't give a damn which way it went. I know it was going to Winston Peters and New Zealand first. Yeah. But the point was they were given the form. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is if you wanted to give more, yeah, if you wanted to give um, money that was above the disclosure regime for political donations, you'd give it to the foundation because then you wouldn't have to disclose your donation. No, no, it wasn't there. Those oh. laws are rules that say no matter what. Above this figure in a local electorate, you've got to disclose. If it's from offshore, you cannot take it. Uh, if it's a mystery thing, you must declare within a certain uh, uh, um, a mystery donor. You must declare it within a certain mm. uh, time frame. And then, if it's above a certain amount of, for the party, you've got to declare it. The law is the same regardless. But here's the the point: uh, we were buying. Um, sometimes when you are buying a service off some other utility, yep. that utility needs to be financed, and that's the reason why this was set up in the same way. Look, I was a Dominion Council for the National Party way back a long, long time ago. <laughs> and they had the right amount of foundation and all these other things. And all of a sudden, what they were doing, and with, on which we based our uh, establishment, uh, is all of a sudden a crime and evil. And I can tell you the dirt and filth that came with that. However, we were always confident. And that's why I'm grateful for the people who oh, okay. stuck with us. Okay. So are you, you, but are you changing the way you get donations and funding for the next election campaign? No. Oh. Because we're just, look, we just, no, we've just been through hundreds of thousands of dollars of costs and everything else and all the crap that goes down making people's lives misery when you're being accosted at the door by the SFO, mm. when, they're stealing, when they're grabbing your computers and your telephone books and everything to try and give you the evidence and when it's all over, they've got nothing. No, we're not going to change anything. We are, we are saying the law's fine. Just have... The under, the, just have people who are in the bureaucracy who know what the law actually says. Oh. The electoral commission clearly, the electoral commission clearly does not, do not does not know what the law is. Mm. That's why they refer this matter on. The SFO clearly didn't know what the law is. Our lawyer said at the court, "This is a crime looking around for an act, <laughs> looking around for a statute. This is a crime looking for a statute. It's the oldest principle of British law which we inherited that you cannot be a com committed, uh, committed uh, guilty of a crime." That's not in the Crimes Act. This is one, uh, Law 101. Yeah. And so I'm not going to have all these journalists and all these critics who didn't like what happened because we won get away with uh, where the version of, of the history is going to be the version of the loser. Mm. Come on, Sean. Well, the, old, say, the old saying, yeah. Winston, you know it, no news is bad news. So you've been in oh, the... No, 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 no. <laughs> you're defaming people and saying that guy's guilty of rape or pedophile and bad and things. That news is bad news, Mac. That's All not right. true either. But you're in the headlines and you're still current and we have an election coming and I think I said to you at the rugby and I think a set of circumstances and a political, I, I, I don't know, uh, environment that is pretty good for New Zealand First and the sort of politics and the sort of people that you reach out to and appeal to. So tell us now, you are you, seriously... You mean, you mean the politics of truth and fact? Like, yeah, you're quite right. You're not, but I tell you, you what. Yeah. You, now, you saw the Herald on Saturday. The day after, the, the case is over and we have won. And despite all the articles that the, the, wrote about us on this case, mm. it didn't even make the news section, mate. Mm. It was in the business section with Fran O'Sullivan writing for them trying to attack what I'd said mm. and not a word of what I'd said. When I put out my press statement after it was over, they never printed a word of it. Now, you tell me that we're running to a fair environment, make no bones about it. Mm. But the truth and facts, what's on the, uh, the name of the game right now, and the new shape of New Zealand politics. And going out there, I think we've got a tremendous chance and we're going to go for it. All right, as we what can. are you campaigning on, Winston? Where do you get that 5% well, from come election next year? Well, look, the reality is it's very disappointing, but this is a country with a pretty, very a sound resource base. But the economy is not performing in any way in the way that it should. 
We don't create the export wealth. We don't have the added value. We don't do a lot of fundamentally thing, fundamental things right like other economies do. And we need to focus on that and get a greater, uh, um, how should I say it, a reconciliation amongst other parties of what we used to do when we were a great country. Now, we were, we were world leading in, this, uh, in the last 200 years as a, as a nation, and we've gone a long way from being number three to number 31 in the OECD and all those sorts of things. And we've got all these sort of, uh, what I might say, stereotype solutions, but they are never going to work unless we realise we've got a very sound resource base, we've got people who work their second longest hours in the OECD, so it's not the work habit, uh, but productivity is a major thing, and where we had far too many what I call university coffee bar discussions at a bureaucratic level and nothing happens. There's a lot to be done. Yeah. Uh, Winston, there are some issues that in your absence from Parliament seem to have gathered steam. What are called the culture wars, the issue of co-governance, and by wider implication, race relations in this country, the use of the word Aotearoa rather than New Zealand and a media that many believe is essentially paid off through government subsidy and funding. Where are you on those issues? And are you perhaps uh, stalking votes in the same territory as, say, ACT might be on those issues? Well, twice in my career. Uh, first, as a foreign minister, when the UN Declaration on Indigenous Rights came along, I saw the perils in that and made sure that the Labour Party and, at the time, and I was the Foreign Minister, did not sign up to it. Helen Clark agreed with me. In comes National and Act, and they signed up to it. People have got to, be, got to be responsible for what they do. And then you have the Auckland Super City where they put in a special elected non maori ward. Who did that? National and Act did that. So I'm not talking about their, their tawdry track record. I'm talking about my record where in my... Decades in politics, I've always believed in the uh, law, for, one law for everybody. They were all the same. That we've got no chance of succeeding in this country unless, despite all of our backgrounds, we go ahead with cooperation. And at the very worst time for our economy and COVID and every other darn thing, here they have introduced this malignant policy of co-governance uh, when it's uh, really designed not for co-governance, it's designed for duality of government. The very worst thing you could possibly have. I mean, I, I studied very carefully uh, the American Civil Rights Movement when I was much, much younger. And all they wanted to do was to get into the break the ceiling and get into the white institutions in universities. It was great to see it. They ended up with a black American president in the United States. And here in our country, we're going the reverse way. We're trying to set up separate institutions as though that's got any chance of being successful. So, yes, I'm adamantly against it. I mean to expose those people who, for their own tawdry and selfish reasons, think this is a good policy. But are, you the mass of Maori... are you suggesting we've got some sort of ersatz apartheid policy running in New Zealand? Well, ersatz means... Uh, it's a mis misuse of the word ersatz. This is what's going on. It's that clear. Look, all communications, as you and that... In, in, in the media, no, it's about understanding. I watched the news that night on Television One, uh, and it, it come, here comes the weather. If you're out there and you're worried about a storm coming and you don't understand Maori, like, uh, like about 3 or 4% do with any fluidity in this country, then you're not getting information at all. This is the whole weather forecast in the middle of a critical storm in this country, like last night. That sort of arrogance knows no bounds, and when I, you say they've been bought off, I know I was there. Labour tried to get me to agree to it. I said, I'm not paying them 75 million. This is just absolute corruption. I'll be accused of being a, of bribing them. And they went around and told the media that, then after the election, did precisely that. You know that happened, don't you? Uh, they are uh, not. <laughs> Winston. They are bought up by the last year. Yeah. I know what happened personally. We've got a record of this. I'm not going to stand by while people say that I'm somebody who would sign up to, to separatism. Mm. Look, I've come from a... Scottish mother, a Maori father. I call myself Maori and Scottish because my, my, my birth was in this country. It was in the Isle of Skye in Scotland. I'd say the reverse, but it's still true. And I'm proud of both of that. And it's helped my, my family what we are. We came from enormous poverty to getting a chance in this country. And that's the kind of government environment I want where people like me and my background get a chance.
regardless of what our background is. All right. So you are back. We've cleared up the court case, uh, certainly in your favour. Who do you run with? Shane Jones, a, a huge ally in your last time in government. The Pro Pro Provincial Growth Fund was a, a, a policy win and certainly a political win. Is Shane still with you? And where do you base, if you are heading for a seat or looking for an electoral stronghold, where's your base? <laughs> Any other thing you want to know? <laughs> can oh, I just come say on. that? You, you can, it's just between us, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have between, between you and tens of thousands of people and me, right? Right. Because the reality is uh, we've got a, we, we have got an experienced team, that's the point, uh, far more experienced than most people have. And so that team is ready. Uh, where do we base ourselves? Well, we're out uh, waiting. This case was always the thing we were waiting for. Yeah. We knew that we had to get this knocked out of court, this uh, um, display, the fraud and cheating that went behind it, and win. And we won. And we, we it was, uh, people need to realise what an enormous sacrifice it is. And some of the people who are involved in this case as witnesses have died in the meantime because that's how long it's been. But let me just say this here. Um, uh, with this case was the critical part. Now it's out of the way. Now the fraudulent description of us that other parties made, I might dare I add, and members of the media had, cannot be with any uh, credibility pushed out there. So we're on our way, and we've got a huge meeting starting very, very shortly to signify... OK, is Shane Jones part of it? This is a simple question. Well, he's writing articles for us. OK, he's so doing he's all sorts of things. You know he is. All right, OK. <laughs> Winston, I just want to go to some other specifics. Three waters. Yeah. Um, would you would you repeal three waters if you were to get into government or be part of a government? Look, we've always had problems with water. When that happened at Havelock North, it was very, very predictable after the, the research as to what should have happened, not what they've said about it. I mean, there was a leak of poison into the poison of water well, a poisonous substance into the water, and the consequence was just pure slack behaviour on the part of the council. But we've always had a problem with water. What I've seen is most insidious here, though, a long-term problem with water, which councils and the government can fix up, has been turned into a power grab and co-governance, just like that. Mm. That shows the lack of integrity behind their intentions. To use a thing like water to try and grab the power structure of this country and duality of government, twin systems of government based on colour and race, is a disgrace. Wow. Nanaya Mahuta, views on here. Well, Nanaya, well, let me tell you, Nanaya can tell us why she didn't tell us all this before the last election. Why she didn't show me Hey Poor Poor. Hey Poor Poor was a secret report written behind the back of, of, of a coalition partner. And one of them was the Deputy Prime Minister, and it's hidden from them. Now, maybe and I can tell me why she didn't show me that. So, you know, I've gone on trust for a long time, but when you start seeing retrospectively evidence emerging of people keeping, evidence, uh, keeping critical information from you, it's a disgrace. It's like finding that as Deputy Prime Minister on the 30th of June 2020, Pfizer had written to the government and the Health Minister to say we can provision you by the, uh, December 2020 with uh, the vaccine. And nobody told us. Mm. See, when, you, when that happened, you look back and you look back in horror to think the people who you trusted could be so untrustworthy. All right. And, and look, that brings me, I guess, to what I think is your biggest political impediment heading into next year's election, is that people will remember that you are the person who put Jacinda Ardern in the ninth <coughs> floor of the beehive. Right? You put Jacinda Ardern there. So whatever you say now, the reason Jacinda Ardern is Prime Minister is because you made a decision. And I think people are going to want to know before they vote for you or otherwise next year, in the expectation she will be running as the leader of the Labour Party, would you put her back there? Well, first of all, experienced commentators like you know that not quite right. You know, for example, that the first meeting I ever had with the National Party negotiations in 2017, I was taken aside by Bill English, who says to me, Winston, 
They say she's going to roll me, but she hasn't got the numbers. Now, around about then, if you're Winston Peters and seen Jenny Shipley roll Jim Bolger on the same basis in a previous arrangement where I shook someone's hands... Yeah, look, this is all academic, Winston. No, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. Into no, 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 no. the Prime Minister's Let me go forward. Let me go forward. Let me go forward. And then in 2020, having had a very successful government with a handbrake, which you critically need in any engine, any motivation, uh, the, the Labour Party, as you know, in their manifesto, took every policy that was there, foreign affairs, uh, whether it was uh, the Virtual Growth Fund, the Billion Trees, Kiwi Rail, they took it all and put it in their, manif in their, in their publicity as having been done by them. They win, we lose. So the people put Jacinda in by herself. Now, you're saying, what will happen in 2023? Well, the first thing I'm going to make sure that I do is find out what people need and want. And so you are not record. ruling out putting Jacinda Ardern retaining her as Prime Minister? No, you see, what I find difficult to understand, after all these years, since 1993, when the referendum was voted on, on election night, is why journalists don't understand how politics works. Let me tell you. I'm I just belong, asking belong you a question, court. Winston. Uh, would, would you put I'm Jacinda saying. Ardern back into power? And Sean, I'm hearing the answer, I'm yes. No, no, Sean, what I'm hearing is somebody ever talking to me while I'm trying to show you logic and reason. Perhaps a different, difficult concepts for you guys. I just want an but answer. Let me tell you, no, but I will, here's my answer if you give me a chance. Okay. This is my third try. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. I will be in a, I'll be in a caucus. I'll have caucus members. I'll have party members who need to be consulted. Anybody who sits here now and gives you an answer like that just doesn't know what democracy looks like. Okay, well, we know what it looks like with you. Um, I can't say entertainment-wise that I'm disappointed you're back in the game, but it looks like you're going to play the same old hide-the-pee-under-the-shell game right up until after the election, and that is you're not going to say which no. way you're going. No. And I just no. say it's going no. to be hard for a lot of former New Zealand First voters and voters to trust you if you don't say, I'm campaigning to get rid of a Labor government that is increasingly unpopular. So, if the National Party had Judith Collins as its leader, uh, you could you would say that I could, should be able to sign up to her right now. No, I don't know. As How did you get on with Luxon? No, well, I'm not, I don't know him very well. I, I think from a professional point of view, Join when the club. in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, but, but a lot of people like that. But uh, you're asking me for an answer. Now, let me tell you, in your professionalism, in your education, and in business, or in sport, who would make a decision like that without all the facts? And I and you haven't got all the facts now. See, that's what inexperience does to you. That's mm. why you've got a country that's that's that's, that's, that's potting along in a pretty with pretty crappy outcomes at the moment. All right. You know? All right. When's the next? Well, you know, I go. What's the next step, Winston? Are you going to have a launch party? When does the bus roll? Ah, uh, like I'll let you know. But uh, very uh, sometime in the middle of August, it's being set up ready to go. Yeah, and uh, it'll, it'll be a Sunday afternoon, and it'll be showtime. Yeah, hey, uh, it's nice to have you back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll well, you know, what I, can I just say, can I just say, as someone who knew Keith Elliott, knew Rob Muldoon, and all these people have been that have been complained about, the idea that you'd actually make a decision without talking to your caucus colleagues and your party is really just it's, uh, it's bizarre. Yeah, but, but I keep being asked. Yeah. I hear you. I, I thank you very are. much indeed for your time. Looking forward to chatting again soon. That is the Right Honourable Winston Peters, the resurgent leader of the New Zealand First Party. And what do you know, folks? He's going to keep you guessing. I think he's going to keep you guessing again.